All right, guys, it is time to build up and light Han Solo's Millennium Falcon, the classic model kit by MPC, but it has been updated and improved for 2023 by round two. So let's get into building this. All right, no real surprises when it comes to building this up. We're gonna start with the bottom of the hull and we have these mechanical bays uh, that are going to get glued to the inside of the ship. We have those two big ones, and then we have kind of four of the cylinders that are gonna cover up these holes right here. All right, after we've got those mechanical bays put in, it's time to put in the landing gear hatches. And if we do it right, uh, we should have some movable parts to be able to open and close. So it's really three parts. We have the main housing that sits right here. And then we have the bay doors, which will fit in from underneath, just like that. And you just wanna make sure you're not getting any glue on the little tabs for the door itself uh, to leave those free. So just doing my glue right here in the middle, staying away from those tabs. And I can do plenty around this end. All right, now just to make the building easier, we're gonna put the landing gear in and you can see pretty simple construction. These three braces were all part of the same part, then the disc, then the foot, and we can just friction fit this in to the ship. And same thing with the rear gear. Okay, now the next pieces for the build are little jumpers. I'm not sure if these are pieces original to the vintage release of the kit or if they're new for this version. They might be new for this version um, and they might be in here to account for the different size of the sidewalls now, but they're just little double male couplers that join uh, the female post here uh, with the one on the top of the ship. Get those little jumpers put in. All right, now we have a few parts that aren't really on the instructions, uh, but they appear to be a battery box. Um, so as I understand it, this is from an earlier release of the kit, uh, but they build up a box just like that. And these extra tabs, they might be new. Uh, looks like this could hold a circuit board or uh, different wires. Uh, but this is going to sit right here. And then once again, I don't think this is in the instructions, but it looks like it can fit in right here and provide you with a great place to put LEDs uh, to shine back on that back engine. I do think the kind of the vintage style of this kit is kind of cool. There's a lot of just things that are kind of neat. Like here is part of our gun turret. And as you can see down here, it gets held in place just kind of by these three mushroom shaped pegs. So looking at it from the side, it looks like this. Uh, this will fit just right here. You can see it'll just trap the other piece in between those two parts. And that lets you have a piece here it's not really glued in, but it's stiff, it's friction fit. And these three posts keep it uh, in place, but still let it move around in a circle. I'd say while you're building it, make sure you put a little bit of paint on your entry ramp. And we'll put that in place here. It gets a little cap here glued down to hold that hinge in the right place. We'll put a little glue on that in a moment. All right, now on top of that ramp, we do have this hallway section here, and it does have a clear part in the back. So it's just gonna sit like that. And that clear part's gonna let you put a light shining through here. So when that ramp is open, uh, you will see light coming down that and lighting the entryway. 
The next step in construction was gluing on the sidewalls. Nothing too special or involved in that, just a little bit of glue underneath, hold it in place for a moment, and they fit very well. The sidewalls, of course, are the big improvements this time around on the kit. They are more accurate, they are better detailed, and they are overall shorter, so the ship should be better proportioned when it's built. And with the sidewalls in, it's time for probably the most fun part of the build, which is putting in the lights, or at the very least, planning out where the lights will go. Right now we do have blue clear parts that fit right back here on the ship. And these are gonna let us have some wonderful blue engine glow. And we're going to achieve that engine lighting just by using a little bit of LED strip right here, LED tape. We're gonna glue that onto this part and that'll give us some nice bright engine lights for the Millennium Falcon. Now, if you want this to be accurate to A New Hope, this is probably all the lighting you need to do. Uh, the A New Hope version of the ship uh, didn't have too many exterior lights, but certainly had those big, bright, glowing engines in back. And I think several of the iconic shots of the ship just have those huge bright lights. Think about the ship when it leaves Mos Eisley. Think about the ship when it escapes the Death Star. All you see, all you really see are those big, bright, bluish white glow of the engine filling up the screen. So this, I feel, is absolutely required lighting if you're gonna light the Millennium Falcon. But that's about all you need to do. Now, I do think I will have an LED that's going to go into the cockpit to light the cockpit. I'm going to use an LED here to light the ramp going down. And that's probably minimum for lighting the ship. Now you get into later movies and there's a lot more lights on the Millennium Falcon. Now, one of the iconic shots for me is the Millennium Falcon flying through the Death Star, the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi. And in those shots, there are two very distinct headlights at the very front of the ship. So I'm going to do the two headlights because I love those shots for the Millennium Falcon. I also believe those headlights are turned on when they're flying through the asteroid field in Empire Strikes Back. So we're planning on an LED strip here to light the engines. We're going to do two three millimeter LEDs pointed forward for those headlights. And then if you're thinking about Empire Strikes Back, there's a lot more lights on the ship there. Uh, first, there are some red lights that are kind of don't hit your headlights. Um, kind of overhead caution lights. There are two right here by the ramp. There are two of them right down here, red lights by, kind of by that landing gear. I believe there are two over on this side to mirror the ones on the other, even though I'm not sure if that's ever seen in the movies. And there should be two lights here on the tube going to the cockpit. So all in all, two, four, six, and eight. We need eight red lights for caution. Don't hit your head, low clearance lights. Uh, we're gonna do those with fiber optics. So we need one red LED driving eight fiber optics. And then you get into all the landing lights in The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, first, there are six bigger floodlights uh, to illuminate the ground. And those are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So once again, we're gonna do a couple three millimeter LEDs, uh, just kind of poking through the surface in those six places. Uh, I did the math. If you figure this is about 170 second scale, three millimeters would end up being about nine inch cam lights illuminating the ground. And I think that is within the scope of something accurate. So yeah, we'll do six three millimeter LEDs for those floodlights. But then, especially if you look at the Cloud City scenes in Empire Strikes Back, there are a ring of white lights around the Falcon's edges. So a ring of lights across here, here, and here. Uh, hard to figure out exactly how many there are. 
Um, and I believe all of those are white lights and there's another set of red lights underneath that. I'm probably gonna skip the red lights um, outside of the eight I talked about already, but I will run a series of fiber optics uh, through my hole here, here and here uh, to provide that ring of lights underneath. And I think that's gonna be a lot of lights for the ship. Um, but overall, I, I feel this back engine glow is really important. When I think of it flying through the Death Star, I think about those headlights. And if you think about landing on Cloud City, uh, you think about those landing lights that are there. So I'm going to try and do as many of those as I can. If I was being really smart, I'd probably do a switch to switch from flight mode. And flight mode would have the blue engines, but probably not the underneath landing lights. Um, and then probably for landing, I'd have all those lights turned on and turn off the engine. Um, I'm not sure if I'm that committed to it. I think I'm just going to have all the lights in and all the lights on. Um, but yeah, that's going to be quite a bit of lighting. So let me get to it. All right, time to do a little bit of homemade lighting for this kit. So we have the soldering iron wire cutters. We've got a heat gun, wire, LEDs, heat shrink tape, and of course, solder. Now I am using pre-wired LEDs. These are wired and include resistors to be driven by 12 volts. Uh, so I don't have to worry about resistors or calculations. I just have to connect all of these LEDs to an electrical source. So I'm going to join um, two or three LEDs together to a single wire. And then I'm gonna join those bundles together. And I'm gonna show you just kind of a little bit of how I do it here. So first thing I'm gonna do is just strip the ends of my LED so I have a little bit more room there. All right, so I'm gonna wire all of these LEDs together in parallel, which basically means all of the positive connections are going to join together, all the negative connections are going to join together, and they'll all be connected to a power source. Just picture kind of a big, branching tree where everything kind of goes down to the trunk. So yeah, we're just going to join together all the blacks and all the whites. And just to keep everything clean when we're done, we're going to add a little bit of heat shrink tubing on before we do any soldering. And this will be the wire going to our actual power source. The same thing, we're going to twist it all together. And we are going to heat our wire and add just a little bit of solder. Now we're going to fold that solder over onto the other wire, put our heat shrink over our connection and use our heat gun to secure it all. Now it's time to work a little bit with our fiber optics for those landing lights. Now I joined my fiber optics together with heat shrink tubing. You do have to be very careful doing this. Um, it takes a little bit of practice. And if you're not careful, you can very easily ruin your fiber optic. Uh, but <clears throat> I'm getting pretty good at it. So let me just get these joined together. So I will usually try and do about three pieces of heat shrink tubing on my bundles. I like to get it to be about the width of the LED I'm gonna get connected to. And then we're just gonna cut it. All right. So that's what our bundle is gonna look like. You can see we've got nice ends of all the fiber optics right there. And the last step is simply 
to shrink wrap the LED right up against those fibers. So that's my super basic way of connecting all my LEDs and all of my fiber optics. Uh, it's a little bit of planning out which LEDs you're joining together and then making bundles and connecting those bundles together. But what I just showed you is the basic methodology for how I'm going to connect all of my LEDs to a single power source. And that's how I'm connecting the fiber optics. The fiber optics will drill tiny holes with a pin vise and push them through. And then we'll just use some glue to hold everything in place. And really, if you want to get into the electronics, there's lots of videos on YouTube about how to do it, the science behind it. But what I showed you is just a very basic, easy way. All right, we've done a lot of light blocking on the back of the ship. We've also drilled all the holes for the LEDs and added a few more parts. One part that I added in was this little gunner station chair that's behind our movable cannon. So if you do look in that window from the top or the bottom, you will see Han Solo or Luke Skywalker's little chair there. All right, and there's that battery compartment for batteries or switches or circuit boards. Uh, plenty of room in there for anything you want, and it just has a nice little cover here. The cover goes on just like this. It just slides in place. Lay it down and slide it back, and there's your battery cover. All right, and now it's time for this, our LEDs. I have joined together a lot of LEDs in parallel, uh, done a lot of heat shrink tubing to keep everything together, and I have added a whole bunch of fiber optics. So let's start putting these in place. We have floodlights, a light for the ramp, another floodlight, two floodlights for the very front mandibles, This will be our power leads that actually go down into that battery compartment. And two floodlights for the far side. Wow, that's not too bad. Now I just have to put all these little fiber optics through the pilot holes I've drilled across the ship. All right, so all of those lights and little fibers are for the landed mode. The lights for the flight mode are a lot simpler. LED strip across the back, then just three LEDs. This one is going to head up to light the cockpit when it's in flight. And these two are my headlights. All right, with all of our LEDs secured into place, all the fiber optics run. It's almost time to close up the ship, but before we do, we have to put on the radar dish. And this is another piece that's new for this release of the Millennium Falcon. So much smaller in size, and as you can see, just absolutely fantastic detailing. Of course it moves, and if we glue it right, uh, we should be able to move it side to side and up and down. All right, from underneath, you can see we've pushed that sensor dish down from the top and we're simply going to add this cap behind it. It does snap together. You can see we do still have movement. And if we put glue just between these two parts, they'll be held securely and it shouldn't affect the movement. A couple quick construction notes about closing up the ship. I, I found the locator pins that were over by this hatch were a little too long. Um, when I joined them together, this side was still apart by about five millimeters. So I had to cut the post there to make it a little bit smaller. Also, I also took out the locator pin that's right back in the middle behind this clear part. Uh, it was just causing a shadow uh, there. Now, if you see a shadow when I light this up, it's because these two blue pieces overlap a tiny bit. So they're a little bit thicker right in the middle. So I also used some packing material. 
I cut it into a strip and I glued it in right behind that blue clear part uh, to eliminate any hot spots from the LED strip. So this is our mostly finished build of the Millennium Falcon. Uh, I still need to work on the cockpit a little bit. I need to paint the figures and put in the back wall. There's a decal there. But by and large, assembly is done on the Millennium Falcon. And I love the improvements they've made. Once again, we can kind of take a look at that side profile. Much shorter with the improved sidewalls. Tons of great detail across there. A much, much better in scale and detailed radar dish. And overall, better proportions for the ship. Now, I, I do wish that it was curved up a little bit more, a bit more of a dome. Uh, it ends up looking a tiny bit flat, uh, but much better than the kit was. And overall, that's not going to be something you really notice once we have the paint job on it. And oh, the paint job is fun on the Millennium Falcon. But let's take a look at this with the lights. Now, I haven't worked in any switches yet to switch it between flight mode and landed mode. So pretty much all the lights are on. Uh, but here is that new clear blue part. Uh, for the back engine, of course, we get that very nice bright glow all the way across. We have our headlights. You can see we'll have a light for the cockpit. And underneath, all sorts of landing lights. So you can see we've got the floodlights along the side. We have the ring of lights done in fiber optics. A couple floodlights from the front. Of course, all those little lights across the back done with fiber optics. Frankly, I think the lights make a big difference and we don't need anything overly complicated. Just some LEDs to light different things. Here's a pretty cool side view of the ship. And of course you can see the red lights kind of over the ramp. You can see the ramp is lit. So there's some light shining down upon it. Of course, the floodlights lighting up the landing area. And here you can see kind of the proportions of the ship. Of course, once again, our very cool glowing blue back engine. But now the real work on this build will begin, and that is painting the Millennium Falcon. It is absolutely an undertaking. It's a challenge, but it is fun. It's some of the most fun painting and weathering in sci-fi modeling. So now that we've got the lights in, now that we have the ship mostly built, we're going to turn our attention to actually painting this model kit. So that's all going to be coming up in the next video or two on this build. Thank you guys for following the channel. Thank you for watching this build. Hopefully it's giving you a good idea of what this Millennium Falcon is like. The improvements have been made to this classic MPC kit. And hopefully my paint job will really let this model come to life and really shine. So that's what I'm doing next. Thank you guys very much. I'll be back soon.